Hey, and what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name's Crypt13, and in today's video, I wanna help you guys choose the correct main stat artifact pieces you should build on your Raiden Shogun, because it's not quite that simple. I know that a lot of people are thinking that running double attack percent is going to be generally the best set for the Raiden Shogun because she gives herself so much damage bonus. But actually, it's not that simple because it depends on so many different kinds of factors. So in this video, I'm going to be comparing attack percent, electro damage bonus, and energy recharge as main stat artifact pieces for three weapons. I'm gonna be going over the catch, the engulfing storm, and the skyward spine, just because these are the three weapons that I get the most questions and comments about. So the choices on your main stat artifact pieces is going to depend heavily on your team setup. If you're going to be using Bennett or Sara, or Bennett and Sara, or Bennett, Sara, and the four piece noblesse set, then it completely changes what you should build for your main stats. If you're doing calculations yourself, make sure you add your Bennett and Sarah attack bonuses after factoring in the attack percent bonus or you will over inflate the value of attack percent. So in order to try to make this as clear and concise as possible, I'm gonna go over the main stat build you should go with by weapon. So we're gonna start with the catch, go into the engulfing lightning, and then end off with the skyward spine. And for all of these weapons, we're going to explore attack percent with attack percent, attack percent with electro damage bonus, and then energy recharge with attack percent, and energy recharge with electro damage bonus. These are the only four combinations that that we can build on the Raiden Shogun that actually makes sense. I think that for the most part, a lot of people understand the idea of diminishing returns and that we shouldn't over inflate damage bonus or attack percent because when we do that, it causes an imbalance in the damage formula resulting in overall less damage. But with the Raiden, because she scales off of so many different things and her weapon gives bonus to so many things based off of that same energy recharge scaling, it's hard to keep track of where all of your stats are. So I definitely challenge you to test your assumptions and do these calculations yourself to see if you're actually right. So let's start off with the stats that I'm using. I'm using a level 80 Raiden Shogun with talent level 10 scaling, running a four piece emblem of severed fate and several substats. Nine rolls of crit damage at the highest tier roll, six rolls of crit rate, three rolls of attack percent and three rolls of energy recharge. So in total, this ends up giving us about 120% crit damage and about 55% crit rate. We get an extra 17.4% extra attack bonus and 19.5% extra energy recharge. As a side note, this actually maximizes the damage bonus from the four piece emblem of seven fate if we run energy recharge sands on the engulfing lightning. And let's quickly go through an example of all of our damage bonuses when we run the engulfing lightning with an attack percent and electro damage bonus main stat artifact piece. With this setup, our energy recharge ends up being 218.6%. And this comes from the engulfing lightning's secondary stat, the two piece emblem of severed fate, our ascension passive, and our substats. This energy recharge goes up to 248.6% with the extra 30% after casting our elemental burst. Our emblem of severed fate damage bonus is 62.15% based off of the energy recharge with that extra 30% energy recharge bonus and 54.65% without that extra 30% bonus. Our total elemental burst damage bonus is going to be that 62.15% or 54.65% from the Emblem of Severed Fate, an extra 27% from the Stormy Eye buff, giving us a total of about 89.15% for our elemental burst damage. Our electro damage bonus is going to be 59% 0.44% based on our current energy recharge, and then an extra 46.6% from the Electro Goblet, giving us a total of about 106.04%. So we add our Elemental Burst Damage Bonus and our Electro Damage Bonus to get the total damage bonus on our Burst Attacks. This ends up being 195.19% for this setup. The Raiden Shogun's attack value ends up being 2,174 after the attack bonuses from our main stat, the Engulfing Lightning Passive, and our substats. So I'm not gonna go through that for every single setup because that's just gonna take way too long. This is just an example to give you an idea of where all these bonuses are coming from and how I am keeping track of everything. So let's first take a look at the catch. And what I did here in the table was that I ordered it by her elemental burst normal attack damage. And I think to nobody's surprise, the best combination of main stat artifacts here is running double attack percent. And then the worst combination of main stat artifact pieces is energy recharge and electro damage bonus. This is going to over inflate our energy recharge 
and damage bonus and completely imbalances the damage formula. But this isn't the only thing you should take a look at because if you take a look at the E skill damage, you'll notice that attack percent and electro damage bonus percent actually does higher E skill damage. The difference between double attack percent is about 7.36%. And then if you take a look at the damage difference on our normal charge and the initial slash damage on our elemental burst, it's only about 4%. And so in this case, since our E skill is going to be active for pretty much the entirety of the fight, I would value the 7% extra damage on the E skill over the 3 to 4% extra damage on our normal charged and initial slash damage for our elemental burst. So if you're gonna run the catch, decide what's more valuable for you. Higher E skill damage or higher normal charged and initial slash damage from your elemental burst. We could try to think of a practical rotation and then stack all this damage on top of each other to actually see what's the best. But to be honest, I have no idea what her practical rotation is gonna look like. If I were to guess, you would at most be able to get one full normal combo off and then maybe half of your full normal combo into a charge attack to finish off the rest of the 7 second duration. And then of course while you're doing that, your E skill is going to proc every 0.9 seconds, so it's going to proc about 7 times there. That's why I have a column that shows E skill multiplied by 7. And do note that the E skill that's in the middle there is the initial cast damage and not each proc. So that's why if you multiply that column times 7, you don't get what is on that final column. So that's the catch. Definitely choose between attack percent and electro damage bonus or double attack percent. Next we're going to add Bennett, Sara, and and the four piece noblesse bonus, giving us 20% extra attack bonus. And this changes things a ton. You'll notice that double attack percent is now the lowest performing combination of main stat artifact pieces. The best one is now attack percent and electro damage bonus. And then after that, it's the energy recharge main stat artifact pieces. So even though the double attack percent is the lowest performing combination of main stat artifact pieces, its damage difference is only about 5%. So in all honesty, it's not that much and your substats are probably going to make up that damage if you have better crit stats on them. On the flip side, however, if we take a look at our E skill damage, there is quite a significant gap. The double attack percent has a 16% damage difference and then the energy recharge and attack percent has a 14.61% damage difference. So that's definitely something you need to consider. If you're gonna be running Bennett, Sara, and the Noblesse four piece set bonus, I would definitely go with energy recharge and electro damage bonus or attack percent and electro damage bonus. Next up we take Bennett out of the equation and we just have Sara and the Noblesse four piece set bonus. And you'll notice here that the double attack percent bonus is no longer the lowest performing combination of main stat artifact pieces. The lowest performing ones are now the energy recharge ones. Do note here that energy recharge and electro damage bonus does have the second highest E skill damage though. But it's normal attacks, charge attacks, and the initial slash damage for elemental burst damage has a difference of about 7%. The difference between double attack percent and attack percent and electro damage bonus here is about 1% with our elemental burst damage, but our E skill sees a very significant damage difference. You'll notice that the double attack percent has a 13% damage difference when it comes to the E skill damage. And with 7 individual procs on our E skill, it's about 8.46%. So in this case, if you're running Sara and the 4 piece noblesse set bonus, the clear winner is attack percent and electro damage bonus because you get higher E skill damage and your normal charge and initial slash damage is the highest. Alright, next up is the engulfing lightning. And the best combination of main stat artifact pieces is energy recharge and attack percent, but very closely followed by double attack percent. If you take a look at the final row, the damage difference between them is less than 1%. And to be honest, all of the other combinations are pretty close by too. We don't surpass 5%. The only time where we do get a damage difference of over 5% percent is with the E skill damage and in this case attack percent and electro damage bonus has the highest E skill damage. So if you're really really trying to min max here attack percent and electro damage bonus is going to be your best bet but if your other artifact pieces have better substats then 100% go with those because the damage difference between all of these is really really close. It's not until we get to about 10% damage difference should we consider not running a combination of main stats. And now let's throw Bennett, Sara, and the four piece noblesse set bonus into the mix. And really the only standout is that double attack percent is doing the worst. There's a pretty significant drop here, about 8.8% damage difference on our normal charge and initial slash damage. And our E skill sees a more significant drop 
drop off of about 16% when compared to the best combination of main stat artifact pieces, which is energy recharge and electro damage bonus. The combination of Bennett, Sara, and the 4-piece Noblesse set bonus makes it so that the attack side of the damage formula is heavily weighted, so that's why we need to build more damage bonus. Now let's just look at Sara and the Noblesse set bonus, and the order here is actually the same as what we just saw. Double attack percent is the worst, and energy recharge and electro damage bonus is the best. However, the damage difference here is significantly less. Between the worst and the best performing combination of main stats, it's only a 3.5% damage difference when it comes to our elemental burst damage, but our E skill is still about 10% damage difference. So if you're running Engulfing Lightning with Sara and the Noblesse 4 piece set bonus, then I would aim for any of the combination of main stat artifact pieces as long as it's not double attack percent. Go with whichever one you have better substats on. You could say that the energy recharge and attack percent is also not quite as good because there's a 8% damage difference in our E skill, but I'll let you guys decide yourselves if you think 8% is worth the headache of farming more artifacts or not. The last weapon we're going to take a look at is the Skyward Spine. Taking a look at it at just its base with no Bennett, Sara, or Noblesse set bonus, the best is going to be double attack percent. The two worst performing main set artifact pieces are the energy recharge ones, and there is a pretty significant damage difference between them. Energy recharge and electro damage bonus has a 17% damage difference when it comes to our elemental burst damage, and our E skill has about 9.22% damage difference. Energy recharge and attack percent is a little bit less pronounced with only 6.92% damage difference with our elemental burst damage, and 7.5% with our E skill damage. So it becomes a choice between attack percent and electro damage bonus, or double attack percent. Double attack percent gives us about 2% better damage on our elemental burst damage, but electro damage bonus gives us a 7.38% damage difference when it comes to our E skill. So in this case, I would try to aim for attack percent and electro damage bonus, but really just go with the one that you have better substats on. The third time around when we include Bennett, Sara, and the Noblesse 4 piece set bonus, I think you guys are starting to see the pattern, but double attack percent is not doing the best here. I think you are starting to see the pattern here, but double Double attack percent does the worst here again. If you're gonna run Bennett, Sara, and the four piece set bonus, I would choose between energy recharge and electro damage bonus or attack percent and electro damage bonus because the damage difference between our elemental burst damage is around 5% or less, and between our E skill, it's less than 5%. Energy recharge and attack percent has too great of a damage difference between our E skill damage at around 14.89%. Okay, and now to quickly round everything off again with just Sara and the Noblesse set bonus. Attack percent and electro damage bonus is doing the best, followed very closely by double attack percent and then our energy recharge ones. The damage difference here is a little bit funky because our elemental burst damage is very close, but when it comes to the E skill damage, things are really different. The smallest gap in our E skill is also the largest gap when it comes to our elemental burst damage. So the best choice here is attack percent and electro damage bonus, but will depend on what part of her kit you value more. Do you want more E skill damage or do you want more elemental burst damage? Take a look at the table yourself and the percent differences and I would say choose the one that as long as it's below 5%, go with the one that has better subsets. So in general, attack percent and electro damage bonus was the best set. It never really significantly underperformed. It also lets you be a little bit more flexible with your team comp because it doesn't do absolutely terrible when you slot in Bennett or Sara. Double attack percent was generally the best when we don't include Bennett or Sara. And and generally running energy recharge underperformed. But this is going to vary greatly because sometimes it underperformed just barely and other times it was quite significant. It was really significant with the catch and the skyward spine when we didn't include Sara or Bennett. So try to avoid running energy recharge if using those types of team comps. The nice thing about the engulfing lightning is that most of its builds were really close in damage with each other. The most damage difference we saw was about 5% when it comes to our elemental burst damage. The biggest difference in damage comes when we stack both Bennett and Sara, so if you're specifically going to be running those two, then you might want to avoid double attack percent. The other thing you want to think about with the engulfing lightning is your E skill damage because it varied. Certain main stat builds gave you more E skill damage, and then others is going to give you more elemental burst damage. For example, if you didn't run either Bennett or Sarah, attack percent and electro damage bonus gives you the most E skill damage, but your burst damage is a little bit worse. However, it's only 1 to 2% worse, so taking that E skill damage 
would definitely be better. So anyway, I hope this helped you guys decide what main stat artifact builds you guys want to run, depending on which weapon you're going to use, and also depending on the team comp you're going to be running with. I hope that this shows that building for the Shogun is not so simple, and it depends on so many different kinds of factors. You especially need to be wary of the people 100% recommending double attack percent because it's not the best in every situation. We also need to compare different artifact main stats with the Shogun because things vary pretty wildly with her. It is totally viable to compare a double attack percent Raiden Shogun versus an attack percent and an electro damage bonus Raiden Shogun just because of the way her scaling works. So anyway, if this video helped you out, leave a like and drop a comment down below. How is your artifact farming going and which main stats are you going to be going with? If you really loved the video, then consider subscribing to my channel. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.